I always say when you when you're good at something, you know, and you get rewarded for it, and then you start making money doing it. And so for us, it was like, wow, we're actually having people pay our way to go race in Australia or you know Switzerland or wherever, and you know, and we've been able to basically travel around the world doing what you love. I was in college at UC Santa Barbara and um, was playing volleyball and needed to get out and out of the confines of the gym. And so I started biking and um, I joined a local club. And Swimming in water polo okay. and I went to college. I, I was at a, I went to Whittier College for the first couple of years. When I was at Whittier is when I did my first triathlon mm -hmm. and didn't have a bike or I had like a junk or old bike. Did this race, you know, was, uh, you know, I liked competing and I liked using the swim because I was a good swimmer. And then I thought, well, I can learn how to bike and run. So when she started, yeah. she won her first three events, her first three races, and she moved categories from like category four to category, like, That's going way back, category though. three yeah. in a weekend. So she was on a scholarship to play volleyball at Santa Barbara, and so they wouldn't let her do anything. So she had to wait till she graduated before she could start riding her bike. Yeah, well, one of my roommates in college was a professional cyclist. So I learned him. a lot th from him. And what was funny was he was kind of a smaller guy, you know, kind of a wiry guy, not, you know, and I'm like the swimmer kind of, you know, fit and upper body and, and I'd go out and this guy would crush me on the hills, like crush me. And, to, and I'm looking, I'm like, this guy's a little freaking nerd and he's killing me on these. And I'm like, and so my ego, you know, I was like, holy, I gotta, I gotta start working harder. She got on the national team by winning the 91 U.S. National Criterion, Criterion in Salt Lake City. And that, so by winning and being a national champion, that automatically put her on the U.S. national team. I went to the national championships for triathlon as an amateur. And by 87, I was winning the national championship as a 20 to 24 year old. Then, and then the next year I went, I started racing as a pro. So she started as a road cyclist, you know, and then was on the national team and went to the Pan American Games in 91, you know, won a... That was in Cuba. In Cuba, won a, won a gold, gold won a gold medal on the team time I, trial. Yeah, went to the Olympic trials in 92 for Barcelona, by, but 93 she was on the national he team. She knows it all. She was on the national team and, and went to the Tour de France. The women's tour was called the Tour de Feminine. And then it was kind of funny, she, she decided in 93 after doing the Tour de France, that she was watching these gals mountain biking and she thought, you know, I kind of I like the mountain biking. I became a good swimmer in high school mm -hmm. and then, and what's funny is I probably should have been a runner in high school. Like I would have been a really good runner had I gone to running, mm -hmm. but the swim coach saw me swim and he goes, you're going to be a swimmer. I didn't really start running until college and my first 10K ever, I ran a 36 minute 10K and somebody was like, I think that's a pretty good time, you know? And I'm like, oh. I just started training as a triathlete and then the goals became, I want to get better as a triathlete. And then we got married in 92. I made her uh, and swim across this bay on our honeymoon because I didn't want to pay the hundred bucks for the for the snorkel cruise or whatever. Off it ended up shore. being like a two mile swim. Yeah, she wasn't that far. She wasn't two real miles. happy was, with me though. Yeah. Coming were back, coming we had like a this. school of, I guess they were tuna or something. They were huge, thousands of them right under us. I'm trying to keep her calm and I'm at the same time thinking, oh, look at that. Yeah, he took us down this one hill that I was just fully letting it go. And I come down and Tom's waiting at the bottom and he's watching me just like flying down this hill. And then at the drop off, I didn't know that it was like three or four feet just down to this lower trail. And I didn't have any suspension either. And I just went over this yeah. thing and like Superman <laughs> off my bike and went skidding on the stomach. And then I was so embarrassed though. I was more embarrassed than anything. I just like jumped up. And I was like, yeah, it's a mere flesh wound. I'm invincible! Tried to get, you know, I raced as a professional for the first six years or so. And then after we got married, and she had a legitimate chance at making the Olympic team, whereas triathlon wasn't even in the Olympics back in 88, 92, when I was racing as a pro. And that was kind of like, so it was like, well, one of us has to get kind of a real job. By 96, that was in 96, she was ranked ninth in the world on the UCI rankings, and that's when Polo sport came in. After I raced as a pro, then I became more of an amateur age group um, 
and then now master's kind of class. You're talking bikes. She's done it all. Yeah. Road, cyclocross, mountain, yeah. you know, X Terras, the off road triathlon. You probably know people that have kids that they pinhole them into a certain sport, you know, and then they get mad because the coach isn't playing them or something. And I think, and they, I think a lot of those parents maybe weren't that good of an athlete. And the kids aren't that and, good of athletes because the true. parents aren't that good. Right. Either. But it, I think having both of us have been, have had success doing sports. Well, and we doing, want them to really like it but, and them to but I, but it's not be like, motivated for their uh, sport. Yeah. I don't, not, not to feel like we we're want them to them. enjoy yeah. it, yeah. giving them chances to do all these different activities and support them and say that you know some things are going to come easier than others. And I think part of it's because we haven't kind of force fed them, like you know, a strict One diet or, or a strict yeah. like you're going to do this sport and you're going to like it, you know, kind of a thing. I wanted the both kids to learn how to swim, mm -hmm. and and I thought it would be great if he was on the swim team, but he he tried it for a little while and he said, Dad. Just because you were a swimmer doesn't mean I have to be, you know. And I was like, I said, okay, I get it. Jeremy, our son, is this month, actually last month, Sports Illustrated Kid of the Month, or Sports Kid you know, of the I Month. I saw that on your Facebook page. You That's see that? Oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. He set a world, awesome. world record at age 12 for the mile. There's an innate, there's something in your mind that's an innate drive or competitiveness that, you, that I, some people have and some people don't. The Kane Performance team started in 2002. What our team is is definitely a, a step up from like, cause it's, you know, people that are a little more goal oriented, mm -hmm. want to go faster, you know. If and they got hooked into triathlon, then they have that next step, they could join our team. And I always say I'm a good coach because I've kind of test, tested everything in like the trenches, basically. You know, I've bonked, you know, we both bonked on the bike you know, or are on the run or, you know, and what works and what doesn't work. There's entry level clubs, um, getting with the, in the pool with like a master swim program, like Pete's coaching uh, three or four days a week where they yeah, get uh, drills and skills and um, build up and they're, you know, getting yeah, really good at, coaching mm -hmm. to start you know, out. Look at what, you know, what's your background, what's your weakness, you know, what do you need more work on, you know, the cycling. You know, especially at a young age, it's it's all about just getting out and doing it more. I mean, she literally was learning how to ride the mountain bike with two of the best guys in the world. You know, Thomas Frischnick and Henrik. That's not all about quantity; it's about quality. The list is long of people I know that don't train right. That that I, I just you know we you see I mean, it over you kind of you're just like oh they're you, don't need to you know they just do stupid things and they do it again and again and again. They wonder why they're not having success. Why they're it, always is it, injured. Or... Is it form or is it overtraining? Is Most it of it's overtraining. Yeah, it's, it's just, overtraining. It, they get, it's that As type, age, you know, a lot you just of. have to back it down. You yeah. give yourself more recovery. Yeah. 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 yeah, a lot of type A personalities in sport and, and more is better mentality. Whereas you, you, that's a segment of it is, you know, you have periods where you need the volume but then you have to recover and then you have to rest and and then taper basically to peak at the right time. You know, I don't get too high, I don't get too low, I'm kind of even even keel and... Um, but then yeah. super competitive when the gun goes off. So yeah, I always have yeah. people that are like... How did you do like, that? I, yeah. When we're training, I'm like right with you. How come when the, you know, it's like we race and race. it's like you're gone. Now it counts. And yeah, I get, exactly. I said, because training yeah. is training and racing is racing. Yeah. It's, it's a little different for me now. I mean, I still enjoy competing, but I, pro I enjoy watching my kids compete more, you know, I, and, and the team and people I coach, you know. I mean, I, st I always tell the guys that I coach, I'm like, if you set a PR, you know, qualify for Hawaii, whatever it is, then I feel like that's a win for me too.